to the open mech. Let's have a look at what this guy can do. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's fun. It is a fun piece of hardware. Uh, we'll scan back in range of these creepers. <laughs> so as you can see, the program I've written isn't hyper accurate. But, um, you know what? It gets the job done. <laughs> cool. So let's see how you use the open mech. We'll uh, pick this guy up. Come here. Ah, look at you, little fella. And um, we'll get into how it works. Now, I couldn't find a lot of documentation online for the open mech. There's not a lot around, so I thought, why not make a video, explain what I've figured out so far. Um, and yeah, so let's get into it. Um, now, just for those of you who aren't familiar with open peripherals at all, it has a lot of useful little things, the open mech being one of them. Uh, there's also this remote, which allows me to look at this computer. So whenever I look at that remote, I'm actually looking at this computer, um, just so you know. And yeah, have a play around with it. There's some uh, fun stuff in that mod for ComputerCraft. Now, let's uh, clear the screen, because there's a whole bunch of information there. Go to Lua. Okay, so to use your um your open mech the first thing you're gonna need obviously is an open mech you're also going to need a robot controller um let me just show you that so you need a robot controller as well um and a computer plonk down your robot controller next to your computer um and yeah then once you've got the controller down Put your open mech inside the controller and you'll see it comes up with um, an ID. So it'll say linked to wherever that is with ID um, probably zero the first one, then one, then two, etc. for each mech that you put in. Nice. And you can control more than one mech from this controller, um, which is interesting to know. Now, what else? So you get your ID, you've got your computer, that's all set up. Whack your mech down in the world. How you doing, fella? Right click on him. Now, he's got an inventory and he's going to need a few things. He's going to need at least uh, these four sensors to start getting around shooting stuff. There are other sensors and equipment you can put in there to manage heat and blah, lots of other stuff. Uh, you're also going to need to put um, energy cells in if you're going to want him to shoot stuff. Bear that in mind. Cool. Um, then... For now, I guess I may as well pick him up. Why not? Okay, cool. So, let's uh, start looking at some of the code. Now, like all open peripherals, there's very handy dot uh, list, um, uh, where is it, dot list methods. But first, let's wrap our peripheral. So, we're going to say mech is equal to um, peripheral dot wrap on the right. So, you wrap it like any other peripheral. Bam. Done. Now we can type mech dot list oh, list methods. Look at that. Mech dot list methods. Um, now this will work for all of the open peripherals. Um, peripherals. <laughs> uh, you can run this and it will display every uh, method or function that it can perform. Very handy stuff. Now, uh, about a third of these are common to all open peripherals blocks, so we won't really look at those. But when you start getting down to get location, get pitch, get your, this is all stuff that the mech can do, um, I think. Get Minecraft data. It can probably do that, because it kind of has a sensor in it. So they function a bit like walking sensors. It's interesting. They're very good. Um, Okay, so we can see all this, and we're going to get into some of these, but anytime you want to see what the mech can do, dot list methods. Excellent. Excellent. Um, God, why can't I type this morning? Okay, let's clear the screen. Clear. Okay, so I've made a few programs that will demonstrate a few bits and pieces, so we can learn together. So let's edit first um, bot position. Edit uh, bot position. Cool. So we wrap our peripheral like any other peripheral. And um, I might just skip to this one here. So you can see we're running mech.getLocation and we're putting one in there. Every time you issue a command to your mech, 
you're going to have to put in the mech's ID because the computer can, or the controller can control more than one mech. So you've always got to specify which mech you're talking to. And your ID, you can always see if you look at your inventory with ID 1 there. So there you go. So we're telling 1, 2, we're going to assign three variables to get the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the mech. Um, this will return its actual coordinates in the world. Um, so yeah, we're going to say those three variables equal mech.getLocation. And then we can print out those variables, which we'll do now. Exit, so um, what's that? Uh, bot, no, Ugh, forgot what I called the program. Actually, what I could just do is, yeah, bot position. I was going to type bot location. That would have been embarrassing. Okay, you know what I've done? I haven't put a bot, bot in the world. <laughs> there he is. Cool, let's try that again. Nice, so we can see his exact coordinates in the world. Handy, handy stuff. Cool, so let's look at the next program. What should we do? Bot move, yeah, edit, bot move. Oh man, learn to type. Okay, so this is similar, starts off the same. Uh, wrap the peripheral, we get um, the bot's location, or the mech's location. Um, now, we're going to start getting some player data. Now, for this one, I've put in my name. If you're going to use this script, try putting in your name. Um, damn slimes. Oh, just let me set things to peaceful. Get rid of the slimes. We'll make it day. We'll make sure there's no rain. We'll turn off night. Look at that. Should have done that before the video, but I'm not that professional. So, where were we? Okay, so, we got another function here. Get player data. That's a handy one. So we're going to assign the variable player uh, to mech.getPlayerData. Um, and then, once we've got that, we can um, print uh, where the player is by type by going... Um, so that's our little string that we're going to print. And then it's going to print this variable, player.position.x, which is going to show... So that's getting that player... So all this information is being assigned to player. And then from player, we're getting um, the dot position and dot x. Look at that. Not something you usually see in, um, in computer crafts so much. So that's a handy one to remember. Um, this will return your um, the player's position at the time of scanning. So that's uh, x. And as you can imagine, this is the same except y. And as you can imagine, this one's the same, but position dot z. Handy. So now we'll print out, we'll get the mech to print out that information. Um, so yeah, it's going to print out those positions, but we can also say mech dot go to. So here's a new command. We can tell our mech to move. Um, and that shouldn't be bot. That should be one. Have we got any more bots in here? No? Good. Um, so mech dot go to, and to get the mech to now go to the player, it simply uses um, the player's position plus uh, the mech's location. So if you add together where the mech is and um, where the player is, um, basic on each coordinate, so you've got to do it for um, you know, x, so position x plus mech x, uh, position y plus mech y, uh, position Z plus mech Z, you get the idea. Um, yeah, oh, that's okay. No, there we go. Um, yeah, so you get the idea there. Yeah, so basically you just got to add together the player position and the mech position, and bam, it's going to go there. So let's uh, have a look at that. Um, so we'll run bot move. And where is our bot? It's over here. Well, let's get him to come closer. So I'm going to use the... Um, yeah, the miss peripherals, not miss peripherals, sorry, <clears throat> open peripherals, sorry if I keep saying that, um, remote here, which is very handy, it's linked to that computer. Cool, we're on bot move. He's found a player, and for some reason he's not moving, which is interesting. There he comes, look at that. What a little champ. Hey buddy, how you doing? So that is how you can get the bot to move around. Very handy. You just plus its, add its position to its target's position and it will go there. 
Simple as. Cool. So let's keep going with this. Um, what's the next one? Uh, we've got move. Um, we could probably do bot. Dot, yeah, bot look. So let's edit bot look. Okay. <clears throat> so it's uh, pretty similar to what we've been dealing with before. Again, we're going to get the max X, Y, and Z. Um, this time we, we're also going to get the player data again. So again, with my name. And this time we just do mech.look at, um, and we're assigning, of course, mech1, because that's the only, that's the mech we're dealing with, with the ID of 1. And this time it's just player.position plus uh, x. So it's the same thing as the move. You just add the uh, player position or the target's position to um, the mech's position, except in this case, you just do mech.look at. So he's um, looking away from us at the moment. I wonder if I can get it. So, yeah, you can see him. Good. Exit, and we'll just do, um, what is this, this one? Bot look. Good. Bot look. Look at that! Whoa! He's looking right at me! So, that's handy stuff. You can now get it to look at a target. Okay, um, now let's go have a look at find mobs. Yes, edit, uh, find mobs. Cool. So, uh, this time we're going to just assign, an, uh, assign a variable for bot, so 1, which means we're referring to mech with the ID of 1 there. Um, nice, wrapping the peripherals always. Now, here's a new one. We're assigning the variable mobs to mech.getMobIDs, so that's another one you can do. And it returns a table of um, all of the mobs around you. So... Here we go, um, we use a for loop to read a table, because that's what you've always got to do. So we're assigning the two variables of k and um, mob id in pairs to mobs, which is what we got from you know, reading that. Um, and then, I think we're just pretty much printing it out, aren't we? Um, and we're saying mob equals... Oh, okay, and this time we can also get um, the mob data. Yeah, and then we can uh, actually print it out. So we can get, you know, yeah, mob equals mech dot get mob data. And, um, uh, yeah, we're just going to print out basically all the information we can find about the mobs here. So here's some, yeah, just useful little things. Mob dot type, which is something you get from um, mob, uh, from the um, get mob IDs. You can see it all in there. Cool, so let's uh, spawn some mobs into the world. Uh, we're going to have to take it off peaceful, aren't we? I can probably just spawn sheep and stuff. Uh, they'll kill sheep. They're not as dangerous. Skellington. Ghast. Come on, find me something peaceful. Chicken? Can we get some chicken? I'd like some chicken. Um, I'm a little worried this is going to accidentally shoot the computer. Oh well, let's find out. Um, now I've got to admit, my programs don't have the maddest accuracy, so, um, let's, uh, oh actually, sorry, we're not actually going to shoot the mob yet, we're just going to find it, so hopefully this should list. Here we go, so it's found two, it's found the chicken, and the coordinates of the chicken, and, um, it's found itself, which is always something you got to bear in mind. It will try and kill itself unless you exclude entity.openperipheralrobotwarrior.name. So bear that in mind. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so we've got um, find mobs. Let's do kill mobs. We're almost there, guys. Uh, kill mobs. So, here's another thing. Same as before. Uh, get the mob IDs, and then we're identifying the mobs. Now this time, we want to make sure the program doesn't crash if it can't find a mob, so we're saying if mob is, uh, isn't equal to nil, then proceed, but if it's nil, they'll just kind of skip all this loopy stuff. Um, and we're also saying if the mob type isn't the open peripheral robot warrior, if it's not that, cool, um, then it's going to print the target, and then it's going to mech.lookat, which we looked at before, so it's just uh, the mob position plus the mech position. And then it's going to mech.file light. So it's going to start to shoot. This should be interesting. And this is going to do a quick sleep. And yeah, so it's only going to shoot once. But um, let's run kill mobs. Ah, oh, just over its head. 
Uh, yeah, so like I said, look, the accuracy isn't fa perfect. <laughs> oh, man, it's like just off to the right. So it probably needs a little bit of tweaking. Um, I'm sure if I put in a bigger mob, maybe like a cow or something, it would kill it. But anyway, at the moment, that chicken's walking around the computer. And I don't want to accidentally blow up the computer. So, um, you just, just get out of here, you. Run! Run! Um, I do like this dismemberment mod. It's quite mean. Oh, there we go. Oh, I also have the, um, morph mod. So that's what that black stuff was just then. Okay! Cool. So, we've got that out of the way. Um, now, let's, uh, get that guy back. We'll plonk him down over here. So you can take your mech with you just anywhere in the world. So you can write a program that will defend you or whatever. And then, um, just go somewhere in the world and get defending. Uh, cool. So, I've now ended up with so many of these mechs in my hands. Um, LS, what's the last one? I think the last one really is Escort. Yeah, so let's just run, uh, kill mobs one last time. Whoa. Oh yeah, he's shooting at each of the pigs. But why is he shooting like that? That was weird. He's just shooting forward. Don't shoot the computer! Oh god. Anyway, don't know what that's about. I think he's having a little freak out there. Um, anyway... Let's get this last program on the road. So this is a bit more of a useful program. Edit. And it's a lot bigger, so... Um, we've... Dealt with almost all this stuff before, though. Wrapping the peripheral, getting our position, getting the player data. Um, what else? Go to is just, again, remember the player position plus the mech position. Um, mob IDs we did just before. So it's all of that stuff again. So basically what we're doing is we're mixing up the, um, the ability to follow the player like it was doing um, earlier. With um, shooting at mobs, so this way it should follow the player and then shoot at any mobs that it sees. And we're going to get it to fire the heavy. So to fire the different weapons, it's mech.fire light or mech.fire medium or mech.fire heavy. And of course, you've got to assign what bot you're talking to. Um, and here's just another thing, uh, mech.getheat. So that's a handy little function, um, and we're just going to print up on the screen <clears throat> exactly what the current heat is and the max heat is. You can overheat them and make them blow up, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's why I've done to it a few times. Cool, so let's uh, run Escort. And now he should follow me around and kill all these pigs. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Frickin' deadly. Um, so guys, that's it. All these, um, all these codes will be available, oh, sorry, all these scripts will be available on Pastebin. Check the description, like and subscribe if you are so inclined. Please ask any questions. Um, I'm still figuring out some of the stuff about this, but yeah, if you have any questions, ask. Um, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.